All right, hello everybody. This is Andrew Connell. Um, sorry for a little bit of the hassle. If you were just trying to tune in on that, I, I was trying to get everything all set up the right way and um, was having a little bit of a trouble here with, uh, my, uh, with my computer. So sorry about that. Um, so here's what I want to go, what I want to do today. Uh, I wanted to take a few minutes and show you how to go about doing the best, the best way that you can go to customize or to uh, submit a change uh, to the uh, SharePoint documentation um, on the SP Dev Docs. Um, it's a very common thing that you see people wanting to be able to do, and um, this is just something that is. Uh, it's just a. It's just something we, we want. You want to be able to do. And it's just a common thing. So I want to show you kind of what the experience is going to be like with this. So what I'm going to do is, if you first come over here and you take a look at an open issue that I have, um, I just created this issue a minute ago and I assigned it to myself. Um, and I'm going to spare you kind of the details of what this is saying. But effectively, whenever we, whenever there's a push or whenever there's changes to the docs. Um, behind the scenes, there's a build process that happens um, at Microsoft for the Microsoft Build Docs. And uh, if you are one of the people who, who manages the repository, which there's a few people that do it, um, I'm one of the ones that also handles this SP Dev Docs issue list. Uh, we, if there's any errors, we get email notifications when there's a build, um, a problem with a build or something like that. Um, and so what lately, and I've noticed in the last couple of days, uh, a couple of documents have gotten, have some minor issues with them. Like, and when I say minor, I mean, they're like really small little problems. Um, and there's not nothing that you would notice a difference of. Um, I'll show you the kind of error report that we get is you see, like we get, we, we, I'm showing here on the screen. Let me make that a little bigger. Um, actually, I got to show you the screen, I guess. I said I was going to show you the screen. Now I'm going to show you the screen. All right. So this is what we normally get. So here's the issue that I was talking about a second ago, uh, 5647. And I've, I've gone through and I've, I've listed out all the different problems that we have with the docs that we're going to fix in just a minute. Um, this is where I got that error report. And so it's telling me a bunch of different problems. Now, some of them are really easy to figure to, to fix. So like, for example, um, if you're watching this, you may be aware of the fact that there are some uh, some of you have, have gotten a, a note, an email back from me or a, a comment back from me that you need to remove um, the locale from a URL. So like in this case here, you'll see where it says for localization, you should remove the, the locale to any link that points to any Microsoft site. And the reason for that is because Microsoft's uh, front end is detecting um, the locale of the current of the request of the current user. Uh, and it's going to put the locale in to the URL that redirects them to the site if it's been localized. Um, otherwise, it sends them to the default the ink on default English. But you shouldn't use the locale. You should let let Microsoft figure out where the person should be redirected to. So these are just some of the things that we're going to fix. We'll go through each one of these in just a minute. But the way you want to do the way we want to do this though, when you want to make changes to the docs is that you're going to come up here to the to the main repository and you want to create a fork of this. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a copy of this repository in your personal GitHub account. And so that's what I've done. So notice here in the URL, it's SharePoint slash SP Dev Docs. Well, on my GitHub account, it's Andrew Connell slash SP Dev Docs. And in this fork, what this is doing is that this is going to allow me um, this is allowing me to see the um, uh, to have a copy uh, of the entire uh, repository so that I can see what's going on. Um, this is where I'm going to make my changes. I'm going to make my changes and submit them back to my fork. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go submit a pull request to the, the Microsoft owned repository. And that rep and I'm going to that pull request is effectively asking somebody from Microsoft to say, I've made some changes. I'm requesting that you pull those changes from my repository and put them in yours. So that's the that's the the final outcome of what we really want to have happen. Now, in order to do this, one of the things that we end up having to do is I need to make sure that my fork is in good standing. I want to make sure that my fork is really a complete copy of what's up in the Microsoft uh, repository. And right now, I can tell that it's not. Um, I intentionally waited a couple of days because I wanted, to, wanted you to see this. If you go to your fork and it says that your master branch is 34 commits behind master, that's bad. 
It's easy to fix, but that's bad. And here's why it's bad. So let's say that this is the Microsoft repository and it's got all the history down here, but then it's got a bunch of other things up here, right? If I create a fork and it was based off the repo right here, and I'm going to start making changes here and I add my change like this. Well, there's all these other changes that I don't know about that when I submit my change, I could create a conflict with one of those. So what you want to do is you want to refresh your fork. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, the way you do it is you, you're really going to, it's going to eat. There's two ways to do it. One is just delete your fork and then recreate it. That'll give you a, a clean copy. Um, the other way of doing it though, is to refresh it is I want to pull everything from the Microsoft repo into this one. So let me show you how we're going to do that. What I've done is I've created a clone. I've cloned this repository to my laptop. So you see here is that here's the link to it. And I went through and said, copy that link. And then I went to my laptop and I cloned it. So if I come over here, this is the repository on where that is. So I've got this saved on my machine at SP dev docs. Now, this is a copy of the repository on my laptop. And then I have another copy of it in my GitHub account. And then there's a third copy of it at Microsoft. And the Microsoft one is the main one. So I need to do all of my work local on my laptop, send those changes to, to my fork, and then have those changes from my fork get sent up to Microsoft. So what I'm gonna do is now that I'm down on my laptop, I wanna pull all the Microsoft changes down onto my laptop and then push them into my account on GitHub. So how do I do that? So this local repository on my laptop, this is just a local repo. But what's important, what I want to focus on here is I need, I want to make sure that the, um, that I need to have a connection to these other two guys. These are called remotes. Now by default, whenever you clone a repo, my, uh, Git sets up a, a remote called origin and that's pointing to the origin on my machine um, up on um, uh, it's pointing the origin up on, on my GitHub account. So the way I'm going to do this, let's come over here and I, if I say Git remote, and you can use different GUI tools for dealing with Git. I'm going to do everything command line because then it doesn't matter what tool you're using. These are all going to work. So I've got Git remote set up and I'm going to do a dash V. And what that does is that's going to list out all the remotes that I'm that I have on my machine. So by default, you're going to have that or sorry, I'm going to list out all the remotes in this repository that I have locally, uh, that I have in my my uh, my repo. Now this, I have origins already there. Upstream is one that I already created, but you won't have that by default. What you want to be able to do now, so visualize this. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your local laptop you want to pull all the changes from the Microsoft repository into your copy of the repo that you have on your laptop and then push them up to yours. And that way your fork and your local and your laptop will be in sync with Microsoft. So how do you create that extra remote? Well, generally speaking, we have, a, we create one called upstream and that's simply saying that, you know, here's my clone. It's a clone of my fork. My fork is a fork from Microsoft, which is way up here. So, Microsoft is upstream from me. So what I'm going to do is if I would go over, I'm going to create another remote, but we're not going to use it. I'm just going to use the one that I already have. I'll show you how to create it though. I'm going back to the original repo, Microsoft's repo. And I'm going to say, I'm going to grab the link for this. Like I would normally clone it. And I'm going to come back over here to my laptop. And I'm going to say, get remote add. And we'll just call this the Microsoft um, upstream give it a name and then give it a link. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a new remote. So we'll see that it created a new remote right here, Mike called Microsoft upstream that points to the Microsoft repo. Okay. So we got the first part done. That's good. The next thing that I want to do is I now want to go through and pull everything from the master branch and the Microsoft repo down into my local copy. So I'm going to do that by saying, get fetch upstream. That's going to say, stream. That's going to say, go get a picture of what's up there. It doesn't download anything, but it just says, go get a picture of what's up there. Okay. So it's getting a picture and it. Now it knows about two new branches that have been created since I last did this. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to pull down everything from the master branch into my local machine. So I'm going to say, get pull 
from upstream the ma everything from master. All right, so it's gonna pull everything from the upstream repository, which is Microsoft's. So SharePoint slash SP Dev Docs. And I wanna pull from the master branch into my master branch. You can see there's my master branch right there. So it just pulled all this stuff in. Now, what I can do, this arrow is telling me that my local repo is ahead of, and is due for, to have some stuff get pushed up to my origin. So I'll then say, get push. Now, before I run this, just take a quick peek here. Notice it shows that I'm 34 commits behind master or behind SharePoint master, my master is. Okay, so let's go back and let's run this command. I'm gonna push everything up. It's pushing it up to my fork in my account. And now if I come back over here and I refresh this page, I should see my branch and my fork is now even with SharePoint Master. Now that's good. That means that now my stuff is a complete copy of what Microsoft has um, up in their, in their repo. That's good. So how now what do I wanna do? Well, the next step is I wanna go make my changes. And the best way to do this is to go create a, a branch in your on your machine, a branch in your fork, that's gonna contain all the changes you wanna to send to Microsoft. You don't wanna do it straight on master. You wanna do it, you wanna create a branch off master and make the changes in there. So what I'm gonna do is, what was my issue again? Our issue was number, Fifty-six. Oh, you know what? I forgot to switch my demo over. Sorry about that. All right. So, all I did. Let me go back and show you what I did here. So, what you see here is. What you see here is I ran the git pull upstream that pulled everything back down, and then after it pulled everything down, uh, down to my local machine. I then said git push and it pushed all those changes up. And once I did that, if I come back over here to the browser, you can see that now it shows that my branch is now even with master. So that's what I was ultimately trying to get to. Okay, so now the next thing that we wanna do with this, the next thing I wanna do is I want to, let's see, where are we? We wanna go, let, we wanna go create a new branch on our local machine. So I'm gonna come over here and say this, this is, I have a, it's issue number 5647. Okay, so let's come back over to our, our local machine and say, get checkout. We're gonna create a new branch called docfix56. What, I just forgot it already. 5647, docfix5647. That's just my style, you don't have to do it like that. And now we go make our changes. So let's go find some of the edits that we have here. So we got a bunch of these localization ones. These will be easy. So we want the file introduction to SharePoint business process integration. So I'm gonna come over here to VS Code and look for um, business process integration. There it is right there. And I'm gonna look for something called en-us. Yep, there it is right there. There's the there's that E in the US. And we don't we just want to remove that. So I'm going to delete that from that file and save our changes. So that's one fix. So I like to keep all of these commits nice and uh, atomic. Um, but I'm going to do all of the localization ones at the same time. So there's one E in US one. Here's another one. What is this? This one is this is get uh, connect to other services. Okay, so connect to other services in your flow. And we're gonna look for, just do another search for ENUS. Sure enough, there it is. So we're gonna remove that. And I'm also seeing a couple other markdown formatting issues there that, that whoever wrote this has made a mistake. So let's go through and let's clean that up. Oh man, there's a bunch of them. And look at, we're gonna, we're gonna um, actually, you know what? we'll come back. We're gonna fix that in a separate one. Um, one thing we do have to do though, is I need to make sure I change the date because the date here is telling us when the, when the document was last updated, that's important. Um, that's something that you will get pinged for. If you don't, uh, if you don't do that, um, you need to make sure that you put, that you put the, um, the dates in there correctly. Don't want that one. And where's the other one that we just did that one. And this one's also got some problems. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's find another one. E and us. We did that. 
those aren't you in US. Uh, here's one right here. So bulk user profile update API. So bulk user profile update API. There we go. Find EN US. There's one right there. And it looks like there are five of them. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look for all five of them. Let's see if it, let's, let's see if it, it find it multiple places. Bulk update, bulk update, bulk update. It found three of them. Okay, there's, there'll be five though. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go and just remove those. So we're gonna remove, oh, it found three with just ENUS. All right, cool. So we're just gonna remove those. There we go, those are all removed. Good, save our changes. So we got three files done. So we got ENUS, 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 uh, bulk. And then, oh, here's another one we got here. Use theme colors, okay? Let's find another one. Uh, let's see, use theme colors in your customizations. Find ENUS. I can see there's one example there. And we will remove that from right here. All right. All right, got anything else in US? No, that should be those that should be it. So let's go through and let's commit those changes. So I'm going to say remove locale from Microsoft links per MS Docs requirement. Now, one thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a comment and my comment that I'm going to add is going to reference my issue. So I'm going to say this references 5647 and I'm going to put that pound in there and you'll see what that's going to do when I push the change it's going to link this commit to that issue automatically if I just do that pound um, link number there. Now the other thing we're going to do let's go fix some um, markdown formatting stuff that I can see that's wrong so let's get rid of trailing spaces there's supposed to be breaks between these that's supposed to be a break it's also supposed to be a break Save our changes. So you're good now. Use theme colors. Let's look for markdown issues. Oh, it's a big article. Oh, look at that. We forgot to do this. So this will be 04-30-2020. All right. So let's just do a quick scan of markdown issues. No. These are all good. Uh, let's look at this one now. Our date, we forgot to do our date on this one, even though I said we should do it. So I'll do it now. And ah, check this out. Okay, so here's a good one. Here's a good one to find. Um, you should not use bullet points with uh, bullets with numbers like this. First of all, they should all be together like this. And you should have list ordered numbers, at, ordered lists as just like this, the one, 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 one. Um, if something needs to be indented, then you need to indent it correctly. So like, and if I can go like this, let's get rid of, there we go. So now you can see it's nice, give me a nice little update here. Let's see, import works. Um, so that note looks good. I'll keep scrolling down a little bit, see if anything else. These break lines are not necessary. In fact, they're not supposed to be there. That video, so there's a tag that they're using to go through and to do the special video link. Uh, oh, look at this there. I see why they're doing some of these bullet points here is because they screwed. somebody has messed this up. It's supposed to be all spaces, no tabs, right? And that's one of the reasons why their bullets aren't, aren't indenting correctly. So we will fix that for them. Uh, there's another one. Here, let's go through and let's, uh, toggle word wrap. So we will, ah. Here we go, and we just need to move it in one. Why is it doing it like that? Yuck. Okay, and then one, and we'll do the same thing here. Pull it back, put it in. Five, this should be a one. And see, a lot of times people end up doing this and they, when they change their bullets like that to put numbers here, it's because the numbers weren't rendering correctly, and it's because they're not using the, the correct style of indentation. Um, when you do that, you need to have a double indentation like that to make sure that the numbers uh, stay correct like that. All right, so we'll just keep scrolling through, make sure everything looks good. Yep, that looks good. This BR should not be there. Looks good. Cool little trick that I have. I have a little editor here. So this is, uh, what is it? Uh, current 
format current, so it'll go through and show it. There we go. Makes it look a little bit more tabley. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that preview so we can actually see what we're doing here. Mm, oh, this is gonna. I think this might cause a problem with us. Uh, nope, indentation's fine, so we're good to that. Where are we? Oh, we're not. Oh, we got a long way to go. Let me skip through this kind of quick. Ah, see these? These aren't going to be. These these are not going to be indented. Well, I guess the indentation is actually correct because there's no image there. So those are fine. Those are fine. Yep. Oh, double break line shouldn't do that. See that yellow squiggly? That's telling me that there's a problem with the um with their markdown. Oh, here's a bad one too. That was a white space. They had a mix of tabs and spaces. Should not be doing this. Questions, table, done. Okay, that one's good. Let's close that one. And now let's look at this guy. And yep, more formatting issues. Should do that, should do that. Um, if you have an image that you're putting in here, let's go through and let's do the rendering of this. If you have an image, they have to be um, double indented to make sure they stay uh, in continuity with the bulleted list and uh, to make sure the list doesn't break up. If you don't do that, you have it like just one in, then notice that our, my bulleted list is going three, four, five, one. And that's because the indentation was incorrect. So you can fix that by just doing the indentation correctly and see a preview of the rendering. Same thing with this. Like, see that guy right there? That should not, first of all, we, you should not be using block quotes like that. Um, they want us to instead to do a note. So what we'll do is we'll do like this, like that. And so now the note shows up. We'll get rendered the way it's supposed to be rendered. Fix that. Fix that. Fix that. Oh my goodness, there's so much messiness with the markdown. Just give me a go through this a little bit longer. And there we go. Okay, so that's a bunch of markdown issues that we just had to deal with. And I think that's both of Yep, so that's everything. So let's just go through and we'll just say mark uh, cleaning up malformed markdown. All right, good. So that's, those are those updates. Now let's go over here and look at anything else we have. So what about setup SharePoint listen libraries? First line of the section is not valid rendered as a block quote. So invalid note section doesn't even tell me what line it is. Oh boy. Okay. So setup SharePoint site lists. So setup SharePoint site lists and libraries. Is that the one? Listen libraries. Yep. Okay. So, oh man. So there's some markdown formatting stuff there. Ah, that, there's a problem right there. See that? That's not, that's incorrectly done. All right, so this is amount, this, this document is all, is, is screwed up in a couple different ways. So first of all, notice how this note, it doesn't look, it's not being indented correctly. This should be indented with the, with this, with the correct version. So this is, all this is going to be marked down stuff that's, we have, that we have a problem with. So we're going to fix these as we go. And you're going to see the changes happen on the right side as I fix them. Um, so... What we'll do, every heading must be separated by a separate line. Now for these, you should the notes are not supposed to be set up like this. Instead, they're supposed to have, the note is supposed to go on a separate line and this really should be indented correctly. And if you do it like that, then notice you get your bulleted lists are, are contiguous and you get a nice indentation the way it's supposed to be. Now let's get rid of these trailing spaces. That's supposed to be a one. That's a one. And notice the difference here too. Notice how I have these two are, are adjacent, but they're not with this. And that's because if you're doing an indentation like this, you need to have that extra break. All right, so do like that. More bulleted lists. Okay, there we go. So now everything should be cleaned up. So now I see what, that, that rendering, that note was not gonna work. Um, that's what that error was that we were getting. The first line is not valid. It's because you should always have it say something like this. <coughs> Excuse me. 
All right. So let's try this again. So now, now that we've done that, let's uh, go commit this. So we've got uh, fix up. Oh, don't want to scream. MS Docs, and this is issue number uh, references 5647. All right, cool. So we got that. So we will save our changes there. Let's look at the next one. Uh, invalid link. Okay, Power Automate, create your first flow. All right, so create your first flow. And oh, more markdown issues. Man, this stuff is. This is common. We see this a lot. Ta da, ta da. Oh, that's not right either. Even there's even misspelling. Oh, we're going to get a lot of stuff we're going to fix up here. God, I don't know who did this one. Oh, and there we go. Another note. That's not the right format either. All right, we got to fix these as we go. Um, all right, so first to fix these, let's go add a note the right way. So I have this little extension here. Adding a note should be like this. Notes should look like that. And then indented like so. And let's make sure that we can see them. Let's see all the renderings that we're changes we're making so we can see them on the fly. All right, so that looks good. Image shows up, good, good. This is supposed to be a note as well. We don't, they don't want us doing, um, Docs doesn't like having um, random stuff, random like uh, block quotes. So this way we do think we render them like this instead. Uh, various, we'll spell the word correctly. That's not good for Docs. Let's go back and find out who did this. Oh, here we go again. Another note. There we go. Uh, let's see, six, nope, should be a one. Again, another note. can go together uh, that's fine that's fine break it up there's a three that's supposed to be four to be frank this is just sloppy oh my god another one Three spaces, supposed to always be four. That's not correct. One. And one. Now, granted, a lot of these things you won't, you won't, um, you don't know until you do it the first time. Um, so I shouldn't be so like judgy on this. Um, but to be honest, I mean, I can tell this is, this was written by somebody on the product group and this should not have been able to get past, uh, should not have gotten merged in. Uh, now we got to figure out what the problem was. So the invalid link, so set up SharePoint lists and libraries. So where's that link? Find SharePoint, set up SharePoint lists and libraries. So let's find the article. Set up SharePoint lists and libraries. There we go. So this is where the file is. We can close our rendering, our preview rendering of it. And let's get the relative path for where this is. Where's is SharePoint? Where was the link? Set up SharePoint lists and libraries. Find lists and Oh wait, it's this one over here. Okay, so here we go. That's right here. So this is the path of where it's supposed to be. Okay, so where are we in this? Where is this document? Copy the relative path. 
Oh yeah, so they're backing way up. We're in the exact same folder. So this is where They even screwed up the name of this. This is supposed to be, you're not supposed to have spaces in this. All right. So we better find that because I mentioned the table of contents. That's going to be a problem too. So create your first flow. So it's create your space first. So create dash your first dash flow. Nope. doesn't look like it was in the table of contents either. So I wonder how they were even getting to this page. All right. At any rate, uh, let's see. So we are, so this is the bad link right here. So we're down in here. So we need to go up one, two, we don't need three. And then we go back down into getting started, setting up SharePoint lists and libraries. See where that is? So we, we here's where we are. We need to get, so here's the common place where we are. So I'm going to go up one level. That's the dot dot that you see right here up another level, dot, dot. So now I'm at this level right here. So I'm gonna go into getting started right there. And then the article there. List in libraries. And that should actually point to MD, if I'm not mistaken. Aren't links supposed to point to MD, dot MD? I think so. Try and find another one that's got a reference to it. Oh, there is a link in the in the table of contents that was wrong. All right, we'll just do that. Wrong spaces. All right, so here we go. We have let's see, we had to fix broken links, and this was references. Uh, oh wait, our issue. That's right. So references number. 5647. All right. Next thing we got to do. What's the next one? So we got, where's our next issue we want to solve? That we just did this one. So now first line up, oh, that's getting another one. Power on me. SharePoint connector action triggers. SharePoint connection, connector actor action triggers. <sighs> Watch this fix. Do, 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 do. Add spaces to all those. Go for 30. More problems. Do, do, do. Do, do. Nope, we don't want to do that. So we have to get add breaks. And we're going to separate that one. Do, 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 do. I'm wondering if I'm the one that actually merged this in because this would have been, I should have caught all of this before they did this. That important is the problem that we're actually looking for because it had the, the tag on the same line and it's not, they're not allowed to do that. All right, no limitations. Let's just break it up. How much more do we have to go? Oh, we're at the very bottom. Thank goodness. There we go. And a lot of empty break lines that are not necessary. And then we will also get rid of trailing spaces and document libraries like that. All right, cool. So this is again, fix uh, markdown issues per MS docs exceptions. References issue number 5647. All right. Uh, let's see, this is list form conditional show hide. List form conditional show hide. Something tells me the same person was editing these things. Oh, we got a bunch of issues here. All right, so 430. All right, these should not be on broken lines. That bullet is not going to work with the way you had it. These bullets are also not going to work. Let's do this, KV, so I can see a preview of this. Come on, KV, KV, there we go. 
All right, so now I can see it. All right, so now here we go. We'll get rid of those uh, empty lines in a minute. There's the one, there's the error report that we were getting right there. This needs to be indented. Ta-da, ta-da. Palettes, don't know what kind of code that is. Can't really tell based on what they sent. Bullet list should be sep on sep start and in on separate lines. This guy, separate line. Can't tell the type of code with this. Oh, it's just markdown. It's just formatting for um, JSON. All right, so we'll save those changes. And again, we will delete all of the trailing spaces. And this is going to be a fix up markdown rendering issues per MS docs exceptions. References 5647. 5647. All right, are we almost done? Last one, use theme colors, invalid link. Oh, I just lost VS code. Open that back up. And what was that again? Um, use theme colors. Use theme colors in your customizations. Is that right? In your customizations? Yep. Okay. So we are looking for this file right here. Supporting sections. Find supporting sections. All right. So this is what we're looking for here. And it's looking for it in the dot web parts guidance. All right. So this is where we are. So let's grab a little trick here. Grab the relative path. Let's see where we are. And we are going to supporting section backgrounds. So let's do um, there we go. That doc is where we're going. Copy relative path. Here's where we are and that's where we're going. And so it's sending us down into web parts. Oh, so yeah, it's definitely not a valid thing. So we are up here. We need to go web dash parts. Slash guidance slash support. Okay, yeah, so it's just a bad link. So nobody just tested their links. Save that. And I think if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we had made a change already. So then this is going to be a fix up markdown formatting per MS docs exceptions. And this is references 5647. Okay, now we're done. All right, I made all those changes. So now that I made all those changes, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back over to my command line and I need to push all those changes up. So if I do a git log dash one line, we can see here's all of the commits at the very top of things that I, changes I made. And I can see that that stuff is ahead of my fork master and Microsoft's master. So what I need to do is I need to, sub, I need to send all these changes in my branch to my fork. And I'm going to do that by saying, get push, but that's not going to work because there is no branch in my fork that matches the one that we're currently on. So I could just do exactly what it tells me to do, which is to say, get push dash U, which is a shorthand for saying set upstream, push to origin, a new branch called doc fix 5647. G I T. Now, when that's done, if I come back over here and look at my branch, it should see, usually it catches it pretty quick, but a little slow right now. There we go, just did it. It found that branch. Oh, come on, there we go. Found the branch that we just did. So I'm gonna say compare pull request, compare and pull request. And so now I can, I'm can. i getting the template that is provided whenever we do a new change from um, SharePoint, uh, whenever we do a new change on the SP dev docs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say resolve multiple errors reported from MS Docs build. And what this is, I'm going to fill out the form. Don't delete this. If you delete this, we're going to kick it back at you and follow the instructions, please. So here, 
I'm going to say it's a content fix. It says delete this paragraph after reading, so I'm going to delete it. Related issues. This fixes 5647. And notice right there, fix multiple bill warnings. So I'll do that and get rid of the rest of this. What's in this pull request? Explain it. Fixes multiple markdown errors reported by MS Docs build. Um, things like incorrect bullet point formats, incorrect um, block quotes, incorrect note and important block quotes, callouts, broken links, um, locales present in Microsoft owned links. This guidance section, I can ignore this because it says you can delete it after reading. So there's nothing we need to do there. I can preview, make sure everything looks good. Yep. Now watch this. When I create the pull request, what that just did is it created a pull request inside of the SP Dev Docs owned repo from Microsoft. And it said, I'm, I'm putting a request in for you to pull everything from the branch in Andrew Connell's branch called DocFix 5647. And not only has it gone through and showed me all the, all the, the commits that are related to this, but if you go back and look at our issue, because I referenced those in each one of the commits that I did, because I referenced this issue, you'll see each one of those different commits are going to show up. They're automatically linked and the pull request is linked as well. And so now because um, the build is running in the background right now, and this is what's going through doing a build check to make sure that there are no issues with the, that are there are any issues with the build. So I'm going to wait for a second to see this come through while we're waiting should go pretty quick. What does it say? 1229. So it should be the next minute. Um, let me show you what this looks like when there's one of these errors in the, in the build process. Let me open this up in a separate window. Okay. So this is the one, this is the email that I got when there was an issue with this. All right. See so right here, it was succeeded with a warning. And it, so it showed that somebody made an edit to this, to this document and there was maybe nothing wrong with them. But notice this built this docs publish report. That's the error that that's the page a link to the page that I just showed you a second ago, that contains um, all of these build errors that you see here. So I want to let this build finish. I'm gonna, I want to let this build finish before I actually go um, uh, try to run this, or right, before I actually merge this in. Is I want you, I want you to see the report that comes back. Maybe there's something that we need to fix here. Now you wouldn't get this stuff. You wouldn't see those errors that pop up because this build is going to be fine because all the contents there and everything works just fine. What we need, what would be nice is if these build um, errors from um, the docs team, if they would show up as like breaking, breaking, broken builds and force people to fix this stuff. So just got to wait another minute or two. Let this finish. Well, 59. Oh, we're already past that now, too. The estimate is wrong. Let's refresh the page. Maybe it hasn't refreshed. The page hasn't gotten refreshed yet. Oh. You're past due. It's taking longer than you said it would, Microsoft. Da da da. We're waiting. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because I'm trying to test out some of the live streaming stuff. Um, so I appreciate you guys. Like I made a mistake at the beginning. Um, hopefully last time I did this, my audio was a little out of sync with my uh, video and I'm hoping that got resolved. There was a time earlier when the sync, when the, the stream got really bad. Ha, ah, sweet. All checks have passed. Now let me go over my email. Let me see if I get an update over here with an update about Oh, there's another warning, it looks like. 
So we didn't get them all. And we have a warning on this one. So let me... Let's go grab the link to this report and let's go take a look at it because this is something we want to fix this. We didn't spend all this time to do nothing. All right, so details. We have an error invalid file link. So it's just one problem. We got it all the way down to one. So create, this is introduction to SharePoint business process, invalid file, file link. So I made a mistake. Okay, so let's go back to VS Code. Where are you? code. Let's go find that file. It's not that file. And the article is create your first flow. Create your up. Oh, there it is. So because we changed the link to that to point to the correct link, now we created a broken link because the last time that somebody had done this, they used a space and it wasn't supposed to be a space. All right, so that's easy. So we'll just say that is fix broken link. References, same one, Ref, your references pound 5647. Now what's cool about this is because I'm still in the same branch, when I push my change, when I push my change up to my branch again, okay? Notice, actually just already kicked it in. There's the broken link, there's the one we just did. I didn't have, to, it didn't have to go through and do a complete, well it is doing a complete rebuild, but I don't need to wait for this one. I know that this one's gonna fix the problem. Um, but because the pull request is asking the upstream repo to pull changes from my branch, I don't have to go resubmit a new pull request because anything else I add to this PR is going to get included when they actually do the merge, right? So it's gonna make things, we can see how that's gonna work. So I can't merge it right now because none of the, all the checks haven't finished. If I tried to do it, shouldn't let me do that. Will it let me do that? Huh, it did, okay, cool. I shouldn't have done that, I should have waited. But I know that that link was gonna fix it. Um, this merging stuff, you're not going to have the permissions to do that. I can do that because I have, I have permissions to help manage this. So see if I come back over here, because I referenced this the right way, because I referenced this issue in the, in the pull request, it automatically closed the issue because this PR, because that PR got closed. So it was closed in this PR. Cool. Awesome. So now you, you've been able to see watch in, in watching this, you've been able to see how to go about um, doing a merge, um, switch back like this. Yeah. So the goal here was for you to be able to see um, how to correctly update the docs. Um, you saw how to refresh your fork um, and you also saw uh, just the process of how I was editing things and making each thing an individual commit, those different fixes um, that I was doing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and find out who was writing those docs for Flow and make sure that they don't make those, and Power Apps and make sure they don't make those same mistakes um, again. So with that, thanks a lot for sticking around and I hope you learned something from this. I will see everybody later.